A cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, August 10, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 6.45 p.m. local time in the northeastern Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring the development of Invest 98, which has a high probability of becoming Tropical Storm Ernesto and affecting the northeastern Caribbean between Tuesday and Wednesday. Today there have been no significant changes in the forecast. We continue projecting a west-northwest trajectory until eventually reaching the northern Leeward Islands, and then between Tuesday and Wednesday, there are two possible scenarios one in which it takes a more northwestward path over the Virgin Islands, and another in which it takes a more westward path, passing over or just south of Puerto Rico and over the Dominican Republic. So, in this video, I would like to talk about these two possible scenarios, and what the effects will be depending on which scenario plays out with the future tropical storm Ernesto. Looking at the infrared satellite image, we can see that Invest 98 continues to organize, and we are currently monitoring two areas of maximum vorticity. One is further east, while the more active one is further west. This is important because it will be crucial to observe where the center of circulation consolidates. If the low-pressure system consolidates more to the west in the first area of maximum vorticity, it is possible that the scenario of a more southern trajectory will come true, which would put the northern Leeward Islands Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic at greater risk. However, if the center consolidates more to the east in the second area of maximum vorticity, then it is possible that it will take a more northwestward trajectory, passing about 50 to 75 miles northeast of Puerto Rico, but still affecting the Virgin Islands and the northern Leeward Islands. At 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center increased the probability of development to 40% over the next 48 hours, while maintaining an 80% chance of development over the next seven days. In general, all models agree on a west-northwest trajectory at least until Monday. Then, when it reaches the Leeward Islands, there is some divergence in the solutions. Ranging from a more northwestward trajectory passing about 100 miles northeast of Puerto Rico, to other trajectories entering Caribbean waters and passing south of Puerto Rico and over the Dominican Republic. So we still have some uncertainty at the moment. We don't know if the center of circulation will pass over the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, or the Dominican Republic. What I can tell you is that the most likely scenario is that it will be taking a trajectory over the Virgin Islands and passing less than 50 miles northeast of Puerto Rico. Regardless of how close or far it passes from Puerto Rico, heavy downpours are expected to affect the northern half of the Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. For the Dominican Republic, it will all depend on whether there are changes in the trajectory more toward the west. In terms of intensity, models continue to project that when it reaches the Leeward Islands, it will be a strong tropical storm, although some models have it as a Category 1 hurricane, so we cannot rule out that it may arrive a bit stronger than we anticipated in recent days. Let's move on to see the latest projections from the global models. Here we have the GFS model, where in the early hours of Monday morning, it has a tropical depression but developing in the western zone of maximum vorticity, which leads this system to move more to the west-southwest than most models show reaching Caribbean waters on Tuesday night, becoming a Category 1 hurricane, passing very close, just south of Puerto Rico, and over the Dominican Republic on Thursday morning, then eventually directly affecting the Turks and Caicos Islands, and eventually strengthening while maintaining a north-northeast trajectory, passing near Bermuda Island during the next weekend. So you can see that, in general, the American model consistently continues to project a much more southern trajectory compared to the other models. And remember, this is because the GFS model develops the vorticity zone that is further west. However, the other scenario favored by the European model, here we have a tropical depression developing during Monday morning hours. But unlike the GFS model, the European model consolidates this system a little further east, which would imply that it would take a slightly more northern trajectory, in this case passing over the one. Northern islands of the Leeward Islands during Tuesday afternoon, and then crossing over the Virgin Islands and very close to Puerto Rico during Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Under this scenario, it would be passing quite distant from the Dominican Republic and with a trajectory toward the north, while strengthening and passing very close to Bermuda Island for the next weekend. Other European models, such as the German model, also have a trajectory over the Virgin Islands and very close, just northeast of Puerto Rico, during Tuesday night, and also the UK model shows a tropical depression or tropical storm crossing over the Virgin Islands and just northeast of Puerto Rico. So, as you can see, in general, most models, especially the European models, favor a slightly more northern trajectory crossing over the Virgin Islands and staying just northeast of Puerto Rico, while the GFS model insists that this system would travel further west, which would put Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic at greater risk. 
For followers living in the northern Leeward Islands, they should already be preparing for the effects of a tropical storm, as all models project that it would pass through the area and receive tropical storm conditions between Monday and Tuesday for Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. There is still some uncertainty. These different scenarios can be observed very well in the GFS ensemble members, where the vast majority of them maintain a more southern and western trajectory, passing over Puerto Rico or just south of the island and leaving the most active part over the region. While some members strengthen this system into a Category 1 hurricane and take a more northwestward turn, affecting the Virgin Islands but staying about 25 miles northeast of Puerto Rico. Regardless of whether it passes just northeast of Puerto Rico, it would be close enough to bring heavy rainfall and some tropical storm force winds. On the other hand, the European model ensemble members, the vast majority, have a tropical depression or tropical storm passing over the Virgin Islands during the early morning hours of Wednesday, and over or very close to the northeast of Puerto Rico. Close enough that in Puerto Rico, we should remain vigilant for any westward deviation in the trajectory as shown by the GFS model. Now let's see what the effects of the two scenarios would be. First, the scenario with a more southern trajectory crossing over the Dominican Republic, and then under the scenario where it would pass just northeast of Puerto Rico. Here we have the projection of the GFS model with a more southern trajectory over Caribbean waters, leaving tropical storm force winds affecting the northern half of the Leeward Islands, from the island of Dominica to the Virgin Islands, with wind gusts between 60 to 70 miles per hour. For Puerto Rico, some tropical storm force winds and some wind gusts that could reach hurricane strength. However, it will definitely depend on how close it passes to the island and how strong it is when it passes at its closest point to Puerto Rico. Eventually, the GFS model has a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane entering over the Dominican Republic, particularly in the eastern half of the country. Remember, this is the American model scenario and, at the moment, the least likely. Under this scenario, you can see that the heaviest rain activity could affect the Leeward Islands Puerto Rico and Eastern Dominican Republic, with between 4 to 6 inches of accumulated rain between Tuesday and Thursday. In some areas, between 9 to 10 inches could fall, equivalent to between 150 to 250 millimeters of accumulated rainfall. So the northern half of the Leeward Islands Puerto Rico and Eastern Dominican Republic should prepare for a significant rainfall event that could cause flash floods. Under the European model scenario with a trajectory over the Virgin Islands and just northeast of Puerto Rico, tropical storm force winds would impact the northern islands of the Leeward Islands and perhaps the eastern half of Puerto Rico, with winds between 40 to 55 miles per hour. Under this scenario, the highest rainfall accumulations would also remain over these areas, with between 4 to 6 inches of rain, or between 100 to 200 millimeters of accumulated rain between Tuesday and Thursday. Well, that's all for the update on this forecast. It's important to continue closely monitoring the evolution and development of Invest 98. It will be very important to observe where that center of circulation consolidates to determine whether the trajectory will be towards the Caribbean Sea or if it will have a trajectory more over the northeastern Leeward Islands. Regardless, it's important that in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and from Dominica to the Virgin Islands, they are preparing for a tropical storm or perhaps a Category 1 hurricane. So tomorrow will be a key day to know where that center of circulation consolidates and have a better projection of its future trajectory. For now, stay calm but very vigilant. Sunday and Monday should be days of preparation. Well, with that, I say goodbye for now. Not without first inviting you to subscribe to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video to the red button that says subscribe, click it, and then click the bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. Well, I'll say goodbye now, and I'll see you tomorrow morning with a new update.